Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Street cleaning in the Old West. How did they do it? Let's check it out. Now, this is a short subject, but one many of us wonder about, especially watching Western movies and TV shows. Horses, oxen, mules, moving wagons and people on dirt streets. How did they keep it all clean? Towns in Arizona and most of the Southwest were typically dry and dusty. Business owners were constantly fighting tracked in and blown in sand, which would dirty their floors and collect on their products. In the Northern Territories, where rain and snow was more prevalent, that same dirt is now mud. The TV show Deadwood did a great job of illustrating how slogging through the mud was just as undesirable as the Southern Territory's ever-present coating of dust. Keep in mind that as previously stated, there is animal manure and urine mixed in with this, making it fragrant as well. Not to mention chewing tobacco spit, dead animals, and general refuse left in the street. Really no public trash cans to speak of that I can find reference to. Hmm. In 1887, Ketchum, Idaho put some gravel down to subdue the mud and filth, but still found it necessary to encourage the public to, quote, clean up the defunct carcasses of cats and dogs. Each town had its own way of cleaning the streets. Citizens were asked to take their trash to a dedicated dump site instead of using the alleys and streets. Frequently, the shop owner was in charge of the area in front of their establishment. Saloons would often employ a swamper, who was a person responsible for doing those odd cleaning jobs inside and outside of the bar. Sweeping, emptying the spittoons, and mopping up blood were some of those job duties. Bacon and eggs. You, know, you could have said that before I went down. Get in the kitchen. In the case of the Grand Hotel in Tombstone, the employee was given a room in the basement to sleep in. Hey, did you guys see where Dan went? They're looking for him on set. You haven't seen him? I haven't seen him. Yeah, he went that way about 20 minutes ago. Oh, God, thank you. Ugh. Jamie, you and your tracking skills. In some burgs, the town marshal was shoveling poop. Most places didn't experience gunfights every day, so collecting taxes and road apples would help justify his employment. Late in the period, cities were investing in machines to put refuse to work. St. Louis, Missouri had huge steam vats that dissolved organic trash into something that could be used as fertilizer. They were making $9 to $12 a ton, so it wasn't a waste, uh, figuratively speaking. Large furnaces for burning refuse had been in use in England since the 1870s. By 1893, big cities like Sacramento were using crematoriums that could burn up to 20 tons a day. The advent of street paving and sewer systems in western towns brought a change in the cleanliness. Cities would start sanitation departments, whose sole job was to clean and dispose of refuse. Yeah, and then someone started putting out trash cans. Finally. As you all know, being on a movie set is about as thrilling for me as having a wife who still likes me after 20 years. However, due to the restrictions put in by the production company, I can't show any of my on-set photos or videos until the movie releases. Sorry folks, that journey will have to wait. What I can tell you is that the crew and other actors were amazing, and I applaud them for all their hard work making the magic. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please we'll like, share, and run down the trail. Really? <laughs> Did I jump your line? Oh, like, yes, share, and subscribe first, and then down the trails. We'll catch up to you. Sorry, bud. God, it's okay.